From Washington, this is VOA News. Early election results are in in Pakistan, in Iran. And in Pakistan, a bomb explodes on a bus. I'm Marty Johnson reporting from Washington. Incomplete results from Iran's presidential election have moderate candidate Hassan Rahwani with a sizable lead among six candidates in support of with the support of Iran's reformists. Rouhani has just over 50 percent of the 12 million votes counted by this morning, and that is more than the number needed in order to avoid a runoff election. VOA's Carla Bab has more. The leaders will have two days of quality time, far from any demonstrations like this one in London by self-proclaimed anti-capitalists. But that's not the image Britain wants for the summit. British Prime Minister David. Pakistani police say a bomb exploded on a bus carrying female university students and killing at least 11 people. A second blast occurred at the hospital where the victims of the attack were taken. Investigators say about 20 people were wounded in the first bombing, which took place today in the southwestern city of Quetta. The authorities say all of the victims killed in the explosion as well as in the subsequent vi fire on the bus were associated with the university. Pakistani news reports say a senior government official was killed in the bombing at the medical facility. News reports say there were bursts of gunfire at the hospital after the blast occurred. And now, leaders of key world economies are headed to Northern Ireland for a G8 summit boosting um, the world's sluggish economic fortunes is the goal. But also on the agenda, likely to be the U.S. intent to arm Syrian rebels. Anyways, Al Pesson has a preview from London. The leaders will have two days of quality time, far from any demonstrations like this one in London by self-proclaimed anti-capitalists. But that's not the image Britain wants for the summit. British Prime Minister David Cameron wants the focus on trade, taxation and transparency and on at least one key international issue, the conflict in Syria. We should use the G8 to try and bring pressure on all sides to bring about what we all want in this House, which is a peace conference, a peace process and the move towards a transitional uh, government in Syria. The official U.S. determination that the Syrian government has used chemical weapons will harden Western resolve at the summit, but G8 member Russia will likely continue to oppose any outside move to topple the Syrian regime. Al Pesson, VOA News, London. At the summit, President Barack Obama faces a difficult talk with Russian President Vladimir Putin about his decision to arm the Syrian rebels. White House officials say the decision is finalized and will not be changed by the upcoming Group of Eight summit. The U.S. is increasing military aid to Syrian rebels after determining that President Bashar al-Assad's government has used chemical weapons during the nation's civil war. Syria's foreign ministry is dismissing that claim as lies, and Russia's foreign minister says the U.S. accusations are not supported by trustworthy facts. Turkish protesters are vowing to continue their occupation of an Istanbul park, saying the government has ignored their demands. Taksim Solidarity, representing the protesters, said Saturday that they will not leave the park, despite demands by the government to get out and a promise by Prime Minister Tay Recep Tayyip Erdogan to let a court decide the fate of controversial plans to commercially develop Taksim Square. Earlier today, police detained dozens of protesters in the Turkish capital of Ankara hours after the conciliatory move by Mr. Erdogan. Firefighters northeast of Colorado Springs in the western United States of Colorado say they've made significant progress in holding back a wildfire that so far has claimed two lives and around 360 homes. As VOA's Greg Flakus reports from the state of Texas, much now depends on the weather conditions. Lieutenant Jeff Kramer of the El Paso County, Colorado Sheriff's Department 
speaking to VOA by telephone, said cooler weather is helping. We do have some cloud cover. Obviously, you know, one concern could be if we have any kind of thunderstorm activity, those can bring some pretty gusty winds at times. But uh, so far, I think the effort is, is going well out there, but we still have a lot of work to do. Kramer says authorities still do not know what caused the fire, but drought conditions contributed to its rapid spread. An extremely dry and you know red flag type conditions for some time, meaning just a lot of high fire danger days for us. And uh, so certainly when something does get going like this, uh, we can have rapid movement, and I think we certainly see that here. Greg Flakus, VOA News, Houston. And I'm Marty Johnson, VOA News in Washington. There's more news on our website at voanews.com.